Welcome to a brief overview of relational cultural theory. All information is based on academic sources. Brief citations are listed throughout this video and full references are listed in APA format at the end of this presentation, as well as in the description below. Relational cultural theory was created after the publication of Jean Baker Miller's 1976 book, Toward a New Psychology of Women. Toward a New Psychology of Women is an account of Miller's experience in clinical practice with women in which she noted that the pivotal nature of relationships in her clients' lives was inconsistent with the traditional counseling theories she had been taught in medical school. These traditional theoretical models emphasize individuation, separation, and autonomy as markers of emotional maturity and psychological health. The lack of understanding of the contextual and relational experiences of women, people of color, and marginalized men led many mental health professionals to pathologizing these individuals. Relational cultural theory identifies how contextual and sociocultural challenges impede individuals' ability to create, sustain, and participate in growth-fostering relationships in therapy and in life and illuminates the complexities of human development by offering an expansive examination of the development of relational competencies over the lifespan. Relational cultural theory serves as an alternative framework for mental health professionals to explore how issues related to sex role socialization, power, dominance, marginalization, and subordination affect the mental health and relational development of all people. Adler described connection in terms of a sense of community and belonging. Erickson described it as homonymy, defined as children's ability to rearrange and expand the relational circles based on their individual and developmental needs. And Rogers emphasized the client-therapist relationship as a primary source of healing and counseling. The cultural relational theory approach to helping and healing is grounded in the idea that healing takes place in the context of mutual empathetic growth fostering relationships. Central to the notion of healing in connection is the power of mutual empathy in the therapeutic relationship. Isolation is a major source of human suffering and is often accompanied by immobilization, which prevents movement back into relationship after disconnections. In order for patients to relinquish strategies of disconnection and shift their negative expectations in relationships, they must actually experience a sense of relational efficacy, of having an impact on the other person, the therapist. This happens when the therapist is emotionally present, attuned, therapeutically authentic, and working with the connections and disconnections in the therapy relationship itself people can begin to expect that others may respond empathetically and finding that they can be effective in shifting and moving relationships in ways that allow them to bring themselves more fully into relationship, to be more whole and authentic. The seven core principles of relational cultural theory include, one, people grow through and toward relationships throughout their lifespan. Two, Movement toward mutuality as a characterization of mature functioning. Number three, the ability to participate in increasingly complex and diversified relational networks characterizing psychological growth. Four, mutual empathy and mutual empowerment are at the core of growth fostering relationships. Five, Authenticity is necessary for real engagement in growth-fostering relationships. Six, when people contribute to the development of growth-fostering relationships, they grow as a result of their participation in such relationships. Seven, the goal of development is the realization of increased relational competence over the lifespan. The context of relational development across the lifespan is inextricably linked to individuals' racial, cultural, and social identities.
Relational cultural theory is based on the assumption that the experiences of isolation, shame, humiliation, oppression, marginalization, and microaggressions are relational violations and traumas that are at the core of human suffering and threatening the survival of humankind. That's the end of our brief overview for relational cultural theory, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos on psychology, creativity, and lifestyle.